and welcome to a, another episode of the Women's Rugby Pod. I'm Johnny Hammond, and alongside today, we booted out the England captain <laughs> for the reigning Premier 15s winning captain, Rachel Berth Berthingtons. Lovely to see you back. How was your summer? How's the new? Oh, it's so good to be back, Johnny, and to see you. Um, yep, yeah, summer's been up and down. Um, it's been challenging, but um, definitely in a much better place now um, with my knee and my recovery. Um, but yeah, and it's been you know fun to be around the team and, and watching them push themselves over the summer. And shame that I've had to miss out on another Bronco. Oh yeah, shucks. Eh? <laughs> it was either smashing Ian half or oh no. <laughs> Um, yeah. Oh, I've got shrapnel wound. Oh, the hammy. <laughs> Sorry, Jerry. Sorry, G man. I can't. Yeah, just hammy. Yeah, I know. Um, no, brilliant. I, yeah, it's a uh, it's it's a long old road, isn't it? It, it seems like a, a tunnel, and that like, light at the end of the tunnel sometimes isn't getting any closer. But do you feel you're sort of paddling towards it to continue the simile? Yeah, no, I do. I think there was a lot of dark days at the start and um, then there were glimpses of really good light and then back to the dark. But um, definitely can see a lot of light at the moment. Got really good support and kind of my rehab's really progressed, which I think just mentally, even though maybe it doesn't look like a lot, it really is for me. So, um, but yeah, no, in, in a really good place at the moment and back doing a lot of training now which is something that I wasn't able to do and yeah I'm just looking forward to just keep hustling and working hard and trying you know fight my way back into the Quinns team and and get back on the pitch yeah absolutely because yeah it's uh apart from anything you know, I do an injury not used a huge amount of up down and exercise and all the rest of it for you got yeah that's that's every single day and actually just missing doing that must be a huge hole it's just a massive void to fill mentally and physically yeah and and you know aside from that as well you know just your everyday life being able to walk upstairs and take your dogs for a walk and you know those kind of things that I wasn't able to do like fully function and you kind of have all your independence taken away from you you can't drive and you know and you're you're in pain and you're taking medication that then makes you feel sick and it, you're just in a bit of a in a tough spot um but yeah, it was a tough one at the start and, you know, having that all taken away and then kind of not being able to just do everyday things added to it. Um, but like I say, managed to come through it with really good support from family and friends and the club and yeah, in a, in a much better spot now. Good, good, good. And how have you rated your start to the season, Captain? Oh, Captain. Yeah, I think, you know, the first game against Loughborough, we were expecting a really tough contest. And, you know, I think we played really well in a lot of parts. We moved the ball really well. Something that we really want to pride ourselves on this year is, is moving the, and having a different way of attacking at times, um, which I think we demonstrated um, a bit of up and down in the Worcester game, but came through in the end, um, showed some really good character and resilience. And, you know, there's a lot of, we've got some new faces that are moulding into the team. So, you know, like anything, it's going to be a journey this season for all teams and, and you'll have ups and downs. But at the moment, we're in a good place. We've, we've put in some really good performances, but there's still so much more to, to grow and to, to get better at, which, um, you know, I know we always say it, but it just makes kind of the excitement for, for where this squad can get to. Yeah, indeed so. Um, one little story that's, um, yeah, sadly, it, it, a common theme, isn't it? Um, don't know if you saw it, but um, the change of facilities, the Irish uh, Interpros have, have been going on. And so the finals there at the weekend, Ulster played Connacht and Leinster played Munster, um, which we will have some reaction to a little bit later on. We've got Anna Capeless coming on the pod to talk to us about that and also about the ultimate hell week that she's been involved in. And it, it sounds exactly that. Um, anyway, she's no doubt will be in sparkling form. But um, effectively, the Connor players asked to train what effectively looked at like sort of the back of the changing rooms, rats crawling around, um, wheelie bins, and what have you. Um, <sighs> Doesn't same really old, shout. Same old, isn't it? Yeah. Well, 
I mean, we haven't had too many stories like this, have we? Co- thank co- God. Yeah, but, 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 but yeah, no, showers, no, 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 yeah. Showers, yeah. We're using models for a, for a kit launch. That, oh, we just haven't. For me, but, but, but I, perhaps you react off, off, off this. And look, the viewers this apology and amateur teams aren't legally supposed to have change rooms. Please stop hiding behind COVID. Uh, but for me, somebody hasn't been in that room and thought, do you know what? There's not enough change rooms or da da da. We need to have this facility, da da da. Put up a marquee, put some flooring down, whatever it is, but don't make the girls feel like that. They deserve better. Yeah, you're right. And and I think like when you say like don't make the players feel like that and you know yeah, it definitely needs to have a proper investigation. That you know, that that's the pinnacle of the domestic competition. And, and yeah. you shouldn't be you shouldn't be seen as an amateur. It, you know, we've got to get away from professional and amateur because these players do everything they can to be a professional to to represent the province to the best that they can. And other areas should be treated, you know, with the same level of respect and dedication and commitment. And you know, somewhere along the lines, these kind of things have not been considered or spoken about. And or it's just been like, all right, it'll be all right. They won't mind. And and you know what? They won't mind. They'll just get on with it. But that's not the right thing to do. And that's not the right place to be in. And, and yeah, I, I definitely think that there'll be further investigation. And, and yeah, let's really do hope that this is a lesson for all, but also a, a story that we don't ever hear again. Yeah, because you're, you're right, Beth. That's it for Interprose now. I mean, this, there was a final weekend at the weekend. And yeah, I was supposed to play some club rugby. Some players, you know, Anna Cabers has been playing for Harlequins you know, for parts of last season. She's back in the Red Monster, you know, she, a childhood club. That are, it's hugely proud. Um, yeah, that the playing for the four provinces and the pinnacle of your career, and you're, you're changing out of there. Uh, and it's lesson to people who've seen that was going to be the case. And um, it's, it's, it's simply just just not, uh, not acceptable. So, uh, yeah. Shame because that's that's the news, isn't it? Off the back of the weekend, when actually it should be Munster beating yeah. Leinster. Um, and let's uh, yeah, let's just nip into that quickly before we have a look at the uh, the World Cup qualifiers. Ulster and uh, Connacht played out a twelve all draw, but Munster, having lost to or oh, Leinster, one of the last three three titles, Munster are the champions now. It's great for 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 Munster to end that blue dominance. Yeah, it is. And, uh, you know, those kind of tight competitions year in, year out to then take it away. You know, <laughs> I've lived it with Saracens and then to, to go on and win it, it makes it extra special. So, yeah, really pleased for, for Anna and the rest of the squad. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but uh, the World Cup qualifiers, we are recording this Monday, the 13th of September. And uh, the World Cup qualifiers, which, of course, is a round robin tournament between Scotland and Spain, uh, Italy and Ireland got underway today. And boy, oh boy, there were some uh, impressive performances. Italy beat Scotland 38 points to 13. Spain beat Ireland eight points to seven. Italy beat Scotland, Spain beat Ireland. Your reaction, please. Do you know, I don't think anybody saw either of those results come in. I think most people probably would have um, tipped Ireland to win over Spain and for Scotland over Italy. Um, But having said that, you know, Italy have been finding their form in a, like in a roundabout way over the last few seasons and struggling to kind of finish games off in that last 20 but super impressed with them definitely the standout team of all four um you know now a favorites in my in my eyes anyway i just think that the defense was unbelievable it was desperate the work rate to just have a full field you know Ireland couldn't find any and sorry Scotland couldn't find any answers against them they couldn't find any holes any gaps and that was just sheer work rate that they had and their tackle technique was excellent as well which allowed a lot of turnovers um, and they attacked brilliantly from their turnovers as well um 
you know, Italy have always been a really good side, but they've always failed at like that last pass or that, um, you know, that last line slightly forward or overrun something or lose the ball in the breakdown. But those things stuck for them today. And it was just in really impressive the way that they moved the ball, you know, their intensity that they kept throughout the game. And they looked fit, strong and really well prepared. And I, I think blew Scotland away. I don't think, you know, I know Scotland have been preparing as best they can and they would have tried to put their best foot forward and they would have given the respect that Italy would be well prepared and in a position to to compete. But I don't think that they expected that to come. No. I Yeah, as you say, they completely blew them away in the first half. Um, I, I just think they're... Yeah, I think it nailed it in just building and building and building and building. Um, but what really impressed me is that, is that, as you said, that, that turnover attack, because you back to all you like or first phase attack, no problem at all. But actually when it's turnover ball, that's instinctive. And that means your core skills, your core decision-making has got to be yeah. really, really good and instinctive. And and it was. And that little, yeah, little turnover ball down the right-hand side, chip over the top for the winger to, to dive over on the ball. Yeah, when have you seen an Italian fly half chipping over the top of defence for, for a winger to come through and and, 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 score? and I just didn't... Performance as on a vein of form. I've got experienced players, Solari and Baratin, and they're playing really well. I've got Charter Franco smashing everything that comes comes away. <laughs> um, no, I think they're they're good. What about it? Um, the Spanish uh, victory over 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 Ireland then? Yeah, I mean Ireland scored really early, uh, and you probably and and it was a case of oh, is this is this going to be a similar encounter to the Italy Scotland game? But it was a real bitty game. Lots of errors from both sides. Um, but the Spanish just, you know, they just didn't give up. They kept fighting for every inch. You know, both teams had plenty of opportunities. I would have loved Ireland to move the ball a bit more. They had plenty of opportunities, but so did Spain. A lot of the time they had kind of three on ones and opportunities on the outside, but stepping back inside, um, you know, and that's credit to the opposition defence kind of rushing them to make that decision to step in. But yeah, I just... It, it, they really couldn't get things going. They Their set piece was off, which, you know, normally they have a really strong set piece. It just wasn't quite firing every single time. They were getting dominated in the first half around the scrum area, which, you know, with the experience that that Irish pack have, you wouldn't have expected that. Um, you know, and I, and for, for, like I said, Spain just stayed in the fight, just guts it out with, player like Patricia Garcia that just doesn't ever give up, does she? You know, we often see her in a sevens game, you know, the final moment still sprinting down the pitch either to score a try or to make a cover tackle. And I think, you know, that that influence she has of that team is is huge. And they had one shot, one kill. Um, she missed the conversion for it, though, uh, so she'll probably be kicking herself for that. But, but, yeah, and then they just hung on, you know, really good, well, some good game management, but both teams are then gave away silly penalties. So, yeah, I think Ireland will look back and be disappointed for sure. Um, I think even if they won the game, they would have been disappointed through some of the errors that they put in um, and just some of the silly mistakes. Um, but, yeah, they're, they're going to have to dust themselves down and get ready for next week. Yeah, indeed so, uh, because they take on Italy next Monday and then it's Spain against Scotland these double headers all on worldrugby.com all being streamed live um, and then the following the, the the final round of the round robins is obviously um, Italy against Spain which could be the final as it were inverted commas and Ireland uh, Ireland against Scotland in the final round. But enough of um, of our thoughts on that uh, Irish performance. Let's welcome a lady whose list of talents is utterly <laughs> endless, whether it's playing on the rugby field for club or for country, writing and performing songs. Absolutely brilliant. Dancing in a budgie smugglers. Dancing in a budgie smugglers. <laughs> Doing SAS type training, hosting podcasts, whatever it is, she is all action. It's Anna Capeless. It is a very, very warm WRP welcome to another champion, two champions on the pod tonight. And 
interprovincial champion. Anna Capeless is with us. Congratulations on Munster's win, Anna. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> we had such a great weekend and it was just such a yeah, brilliant win, brilliant match. We loved it. Yeah, just on and really, really happy with it after the weekend. Yeah. Is your head as sore as your body today, please? <laughs> My body's worse. It was very sensible. So, very sensible celebrations. Yep. <laughs> the face is on you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have a part of Guinness in your hand. It's not normally sensible. Today. She's very good, isn't she? Yeah, podcast, but she knows she's just moving us gently on. Us, isn't she? She's just saying, no, there's nothing to see here. On you go. On you go. Very but confidential. Mean, yeah, absolutely. Well, you, you obviously enjoyed it. I mean, Talk, talk us to the, the, the game, Anna. Great to be in, in that kind of level of competition against uh, mm. the old blue rival uh, and to get one over on them. Goodness, yeah. Like, I'm, you know, like all the girls playing playing in their interpros, you know, your province is like born and bred. That's where, that's where your love of rugby starts. And certainly for me, that was the case. You know, like when I was in school we were like obsessed with Munster and we used to spend all our money on tickets going to games like my friends and I we went to France we went to England sometimes like traveling like on our own is what our parents were thinking <laughs> but we used to go off to games like on, on flights and we were very independent but like just all for the love of Munster and like um you know then when I started to play and started to play for Munster it just it always stuck with me and that gave me like the best intro into rugby that I ever could have had, like both as, you know, someone loving watching it and then starting to play it. Like, so to kind of have come a bit of a full circle and, you know, be playing for Munster in this interpose this year was really special. And like to, you know, I've obviously had my own disappointments and wasn't, you know, playing in, in, in I'm not playing in Italy this week, you know, for the qualifiers, which was the goal. But, you know, a silver lining of that was being released to play for our provinces. And, like, you could see that at the weekend that the girls who, you know, got the chance to go back to their um, provinces, to, to, to back to their kind of grassroots when they, you know, weren't selected for Ireland, just played with their hearts and their sleeve and just really, like, up to the competition. Now, that's not to say that the competition wasn't already there. I was so impressed, like, especially after a year and a bit you know of no rugby at all that people haven't played rugby in so long the level was so high and it was so entertaining and like the young girls like in all the provinces but like in Munster especially like to see those young girls coming through oh my god like it's just so great it re they remind me of like me and us and my teammates like when we were underage and like coming into the senior squad and like they were telling us like they're so look oh you're so scary <laughs> one of the girls <laughs> One of the senior girls is saying like she still had to do her driving test, and then one of the younger girls said to her like, "Oh, you're not so scary anymore." <laughs> but I like I was like, "Oh my god, I can't believe they're scared of us." But I was terrified of all the older girls when I was that young in the squad as well. So, you know, kind of a full circle thing, and like I loved it. I loved the game at the weekend. Uh, my body doesn't love me afterwards <laughs> for it, but uh, that was just you know how how good the game was. It must have been such a special feeling then if you've gone full circle, childhood memories, you know, it's it's so deep rooted within you to then lift that trophy. I mean, talk us through those moments when that was happening. Yeah, I don't know. Did you see um did you see the story posted as well during the week where <laughs> when I was 16, my friend and I um we like snuck up to the pedestrian bridge, like in my hometown, because the players who were based in Cork used to drive to Limerick for training. And it, they were preparing for the Heineken Cup final. And we were like, oh, we want to like hang something off the bridge so that they can see us on the way to training. And like my friend painted this white bed sheet with red paint and it said, come on, monster. And we hung it off the pedestrian bridge. Like we were sneaking around late at night thinking we were like, oh, it was such a <laughs> criminal activity. Hanging this bed sheet and it rained all night. And in the morning, everyone was on their way to school and it looked like it read, come on, murder. And everyone was like, oh, my God, did everyone see that bed sheet hanging up in the best bridge? We're like, no, whoops. No, no. <laughs> oh, what do you mean? And then someone took it down eventually. So, um, you know, they're the kind of stories that I was chatting about with my friends. So, yeah, like to have those memories. And so to come back and like, you know, when you stand in the circle and you look around, you know, I know that's a special thing in every team and any team, because when a team like brings people together, 
that's an amazing thing. But when it's, you know, when it's based on like where you're all from, like South of Ireland, like, you know, Heart of Ireland, like Irish rugby and um, then to go on and win and just to sing like the Munster songs and, uh, you know, all the Limerick accents and the Cork accents and everyone like taking taking the piss out of each other for, for where they're from. And like, you know, and, and, and it's just so, yeah, really is like such such a special thing. It's an unbelievable rugby uh, heartland, isn't it? Um, some some friends down there, and I know yeah, you posted a wonderful picture. I tell you what, we haven't mentioned it's very happy returns, many happy returns to you. It's going to get the birthday <laughs> word out. Happy birthday, <laughs> Anna! Thank it's you. Twenty one. Yes. Yeah, you got I'm the delighted. The front door now and everything. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Fantastic. Again. <laughs> um, well, that, that makes the, the, the next question a bit strange because 14 years ago you made your master <laughs> debut. <laughs> Something like that. I feel like my yeah, I, I gave it away there, didn't I? So I actually think that 14 might not even have been correct. I'm still actually trying to work it out, like what what year that was, because the 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 under 18 season at that time kind of ran before Christmas. And then some years it ran after Christmas. So I'm not actually sure what year that was. I can't really you remember. You don't want to give but... your age away. That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, right. That's out. Well, like, you know, you know that I'm a linguist and I love languages. I can't do maths. OK, like when I'm in the gym, the most difficult thing for me is adding the weights on the bar. So I may have got the number wrong. Let's just say that. OK. And okay. Uh... <laughs> so, so, so well over a decade ago, in between decade and two decades ago, you made your master's debut. Goodness. And now you've been around, done a few bits and bits. I mean, you're still keeping yourself ridiculously busy. And we'll, we'll come on to you putting your thrills through, through hell and back. Um, but mm -hmm. um, you've been into the quarters over with birth slot. Um, and now I'll come back to, to Munster. Yeah, I mean, that. I know you sort of expressed it already, but, but that... Hello, Bernie, and it's to be back in back in the red. And what a victory! Nineteen seven. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Can, it um, was. You can hold that over the, yeah, the, yeah. You can hold that over the lens a lot for uh, for some years now. Bragging rights. Oh, definitely, because Leinster were going for three in a row, and like when I played for Munster back in the day, like when I was one of the younger members of the squad, like we were winning year after year, it's like monster, 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 monster. It was just kind of a given that we would go in, perform, bring the cup home, fill the cup, drink out of the cup. So, you know, this year, it, like, it, it, <laughs> no, just once, just once. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Again. The, the, co the cocoa stains the cup, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, this year was different, to be fair, because of COVID restrictions and things like that. It wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like normal times, but, um, yeah, so to to kind of get that monkey off the back and bring that trophy back to Munster was a really nice feeling this year for sure. Um, and Leinster have some great players. Leinster seemed very similar to us, like a lovely combo of like old, experienced heads, and then really young, exciting players, and like just trying to marry the two together. I think Leinster did an excellent job of that as well as us. Um, so that's a real credit to the game, and I would say the same for Connacht and Ulster as well. So, but just in, in terms of the final, um, you know, it, it was really, really tough. Um, very, very physical, like massive fights at the breakdown, and um, yeah, like we like just kind of some special moments to get us those those tries to give us a bit kind of mo momentum, like going forward and to come away with the win. Yeah, delighted. Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, we got. Don't want to take too much of your time. We've got loads more to to get into with you. Um, tree of the weekend, boy, a bit of time for time, and then the results to tonight with um, with Ireland and the World Cup qualifiers must have burst burst the bubble a little bit um, as Ireland have gone down to to Spain, eight points to seven. You see the game? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I did, yeah. I watched it. I can't believe I can't believe that these games are finally going ahead after so long. And you know, everyone, everyone in, across each of those four countries, how every player has prioritized these qualifiers over the last couple of years to have them finally, finally go ahead. That is that's that's pretty amazing and, and very difficult because 
there hasn't been those opportunities like there normally would be for a World Cup qualification process to get in warm up games and a warm up tournament. And, you know, you have to try and kind of replicate that feeling, that test match feeling in training, which isn't easily done. But we trained really hard all summer. Like we had a brilliant summer of training. Um, so I think the girls will be a little deflated after that. Um, I certainly feel a little deflated. Um, just couldn't kind of like keep keep um, keep the phases going together, especially with the you know the unbelievable talent we have on our wings. You know, I think they'll be kicking themselves that they didn't get get the ball a bit more, and because that's where we can really do damage. But um, it's still all to play for. Do you know that's what it's for? It's not a knockout tournament. It's a round robin for those reasons to allow the teams to maybe stumble, make a mistake, learn, come back stronger, and. I, I've no doubt that that's what Ireland and 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 Scotland as well are, are going to do, like for for the next round. Italy next. I don't know if you caught that game as uh, uh, as well, or, or certainly bits of it, or even yeah. heard a report or whatever. That that's a tougher challenge again. You would suspect. Mm-hmm. Well, there's no doubt in our minds how tough each of this opposition was going to be. Um, you know, to have, you know, to see Spain kind of like pulling out their real seven style, like kind of continuous ball in play, like, you know, that's not something that would have taken the girls by surprise. You know, we knew how good, how athletic they are and how hungry they are. So likewise, now with Italy, you know, they're, they're going to be just the same. Every single girl in every one of those squads wants to go to the World Cup is like picturing herself arriving on a plane to New Zealand. So there's nothing that's going to, you know, that that's... that that has to be found within everyone performing at this competition to, to, you know, whatever, whatever mistake just happened, like rectify it, move on, get it right the next time, because next, you know, the next round is really going to tell, you know, so we were under no illusions about how, how tough Italy is going to be. And yeah, they looked really good against Scotland and, um, you know, you can never like ride off Scotland then either. Like the, the performances that Scotland come out within a six nations, like when they, you know, did did they did they beat France? Yeah, like and and then did they draw with France? Was that like all these like you know unbelievable results from Scotland that almost sometimes you don't expect? So that's you know there's three like just massive teams to to come up against. You know we've we've got one loss so far, so we need to get it right for the for the next two games against two very tough opposition. Yeah, I definitely agree with you on that. Like in terms of actually seeing Scotland's best and Ireland's best, we didn't see that today, and, mm-hmm. and I'm sure that they're saying the exact same thing in, in the changing rooms and in the review meeting tomorrow. But you're so right; they've got to kind of box that off, learn very quickly from it, and move on because it is still all to play for. There's still yeah. opportunities, um, and yeah, you can't kind of get in that mindset thinking, "Well, we've lost that one and that's that done." Which, as you say, none of those players are going to give up the ghost that easily. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And that's like, you know, that, like I said, that's what a round robin tournament is for. You know, that's what makes it really great. And like, um, you know, I hope as many people as possible are going to tune into these, you know, next two games to see how good this is and kind of a taste for how good the World Cup is going to be in a year's time. It, it will be. And you you can tell just with your, your your tone and obviously for our YouTube viewers can can see in your idea you're talking about Ireland and you guys training over the summer obviously not involved to today where exactly are you at with your with your rugby uh, at the moment <laughs> we're champions how of inter pro how much time do we have um <laughs> oh no Born like even. i <laughs> um I've I've um I put a lot of thought into what my next step is going to be because you know the 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 this year hasn't really worked as I worked out for me as I would have liked and um you know that that's fine I I took a chance and it didn't really pay off like I had hoped it would so yeah I've kind of all summer I've been like putting off making a decision and and um yeah I think I think now I'm in Dublin right now and I won't be in Dublin in two weeks' time. And that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> and Watch for a face. Women's Robbie Pod exclusive, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Anna Claypis will be playing for... No. Um, <laughs> and you've been filling your time with some absolutely bon- bonkers stuff. Ultimate Hell Week. Mm. 
What on earth possessed you? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know. You know, it, it, it was it was an opportunity that appeared. I like when when they asked me to be involved. So I was asked to partake in this quite late. Like most most of the other contestants, not all of them, but most of the other contestants knew about a year in advance that, that this was happening. But there was somebody else was supposed to take part in this show who got injured. So they needed someone to take their place and that happened with me and a couple of other contestants on it but when they asked me I was like absolutely not do you know that these people <laughs> that sit down and watch like SAS and they'd be like on their couch like raring to go to do a training session like because oh I, I'd love to do like I'd love to do something like that I've never ever felt that That's way when me. I've been watching these <laughs> that is not me <laughs> I am not that person I'd be sitting there and like you know some of the challenges look kind of cool and I'd be like oh I wonder how I'd do but uh I've never wanted to do it ever. And actually, <laughs> a weird story is that I, you know, I, I, I said no when they asked me first. It's like, no, nah, it's not for me. Like, I weirdly, um, I was running in the park the next day, and I'd already decided, yeah, I'm at peace with that decision now. I'm not going to take part. Um, it was around the time of Six Nations, so actually, I wasn't in a good place myself. I was really broken hearted at that time, actually, not to have been involved in Six Nations. So. Um, when this opportunity came, I was like, is it, is it an opportunity I should take? Like, I don't, I don't know, but I went to the park, right. And I was doing my training in the park, actually the same day that the girls were playing Italy. So I was just running in the park on my own. And this, um, I was running with one of those parachute things, you know, for speed work. And, um, this man came over and was like, uh, where did you get that parachute? So I started talking to him about, uh, just things. And he said he was in the army. I said, have you ever heard of this show? He was like, oh, he was like, yeah, I know all the guys that run that show. And uh, it's a, it's an amazing thing to take part in. And I was like, oh, I was asked, but I don't think I'll take part. He was like, come here. He was like, you would be crazy not to take that opportunity. And I don't know, it was a very strange encounter meeting this person. I thought it was like a sign. So yeah. I kind of took it as like, OK. And like, I do believe that, you know, you can't only do the things in life that you know are going to work out. You can't be like, oh, I'll do that because it's easy. Look, I, I, I didn't want to do it, but then I started to come around to the idea. And like, I had a friend that I played rugby with here. She she played for Ireland um, in the last few years, Neveny Drummer. She was in the army and she took me training and she got me excited for it. So, you know, you have to open your mind to these things. And it was an amazing experience, but it was hell. <laughs> it was hell. <laughs> Like it's uh, everyone's watching the show being like, Oh Anna, it looks so hard. I was like, it was a thousand times harder than what it looks on the telly, like a thousand oh. times. So yeah. I really yeah. want to see it. Yeah, really yeah, yeah. Watch it. It's only in the RT player. You can, you can you can get a VPN or something to watch it. I don't know. I mean, Anna, to be fair <laughs> to, to be fair to the makers of the show, it's not called have a light jog round your local <clears throat> park week, is it? I mean it is called Ultimate Hell. Mm. Mm -hmm. what was the Hence, worst bit what was the worst bit of it the worst bit was a challenge that we had to do um called scratch it's like an army training thing i'd never heard of what it was before but um it's like they bring you to the beach and they absolutely flog you like really really tough stuff but like that's not the hard part actually like the physical stuff is like you know <sighs> the physical stuff, we're all athletes or we're, we're all like something in sport, you know, so we've all been down that, like, you know, in, in that like hurt locker before, you know, of like real physical kind of like dragging it out and, you know, you get through it and it's, it's how they, they strip you back mentally. That's where the real challenge lies because, you know, if, if you're it's strong minded and you've, you're, you're thinking laterally and you're, you're thinking logically, you'll figure a way out to, to get through things. But that's why, they that's what it's designed to do do you know like strip you back like and and i'm terrified of heights and i already jumped out of a helicopter in that first episode <laughs> like that was cool and something i was really proud of myself for doing but they kept coming back with more heights challenges then i was like oh my god so i had, kept having to like climb on things and all the rest so um but the, the, like i say the, the the physical things are hard but the, the mental breakdown and like no sleep very little food you know, as an athlete, you know, when you're forcing in the pre-match meals 
and you feel like, oh my God, I wonder did I eat enough before playing this match? Because if I don't, I might just keel over in the second half because I haven't eaten enough. Like we were being fed like nothing. Um, so, you know, it's, it's all... It's all in your mind then, like, can you push through, like, even on, you know, it's just so low energy and little sleep and things like that. So, um, yeah, but that that would event you, called Scratch was the worst. <laughs> would you recommend somebody to do it or would you do it again? Actually, yes, to both. As crazy as that <laughs> sounds, and I know I've just said, like, it was terrible. I actually would do it again. <laughs> I would do it again. And uh, I would tell, I would recommend other people to, to do it as well. Isn't that kind of weird that I've just t- told you how terrible this was? And I was like, oh, yeah, definitely. Go ahead. Through more torture. <laughs> Completely <laughs> sane. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, do you know what it's, what it's like? You know, a really hard rugby match, you feel like really close to your teammates afterwards. It's the same thing. Like the bond that you make with the people around you mm. is something that you can't replicate anywhere else. And like I've, you know, I've got a, an amazing new group of friends who've all been on this journey together now. And um you know outside a rugby circle so that's been definitely worth it and and yeah going to hell to make friends so it's <laughs> <laughs> the only place i can make friends these days <laughs> well, you're in the red don't be silly you're a friend <laughs> that's true um I, I, Anna, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it there um i i mean brilliant um as ever if somebody listened six minutes ago and then fast forwarded now no, I'd, no, I'd never do that. Did I? Yeah, yeah, I'd recommend it too, and I'd do it again myself. Yeah, it, it was brilliant. Um, so, so very you, absolutely magic. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on um, and telling us about your yeah, brilliant, brilliant victory. Um, fabulous to see that, and we wait with bated breath um, to see where you will be playing your rugby next season. Would you say yes if I guess? No. I've got ideas. Guess, no idea. guess. I'll say no, but guess. I want to see where you're going to guess. Um, sale. Oh, I'm on mute. I said sale. Or oh, Worcester. Did you? Yeah. Okay. You're both wrong. <laughs> no, I'm DMP. joking. You're both wrong. Nope. Yep, good. Should we leave it there before we all get into hot water? We just <laughs> end, end, name all of them. She's going to say no anyway. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> well, give us a heads up when, you, when you're going to announce it anyway. Absolutely. Um, I will do. Yeah. Anna, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Always a real pleasure. So great to, to see, to see yeah. you. Yeah. And um, yeah, keep strumming on the guitar. Keep doing the ultimate hell. Keep playing some rugby. And yeah, we look forward <laughs> to seeing what your next, your, next, your next exciting chapter brings for you. Thank Happy you so much. Oh, yeah, thank you. I birthday. keep forgetting that. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely to see you. Thanks for having me on. Happy birthday. Hey, Berth, have you heard of VO? VO? Yes, VO, the sports camera that can film rugby matches at the near for a camera operator. Really? Yeah, the camera uses two 4K lenses to capture the entire pitch in 180 degrees to make sure you don't miss a single moment. Saracens women and Wasps women already using their cameras last season. So is it just for elite sport? No, VO is is bridging that gap berth between grassroots and elite sport with state-of-the-art camera technology, making it easy and accessible for everyone to use that every team, big or small, can watch themselves play and develop and level up. Now that sounds like the perfect coaching tool. And it's portable. Portable? Yes, it attaches to a prior tripod, which means you can set it up anywhere without the need for internet or mains connection. And do you know what best bit of it all is? Theo are offering the Women's Rugby Pod listeners... £100 off a camera by using the discount code WRP100. That's WRP100 for £100 off your very own VO camera. Visit VO.co. That's V-E-O dot C-O.
Anna Capers there. Oh, she's a... You must miss her, actually. Like, genuinely miss her around Surrey Sports Park because she is... She bonkers, clearly, uh, in, a, in a lovely, <laughs> lovely Irish way. And, and her mannerisms and her, her vocab, I just uh, absolutely love. I remember her being at the live show, our first live show, and she was in the audience, wasn't she? And she was yeah. making us all laugh then. But, yeah, you genuinely must miss her at Surrey Sports Park. Yeah, no, she's just such a bundle of good energy. And, and, and yeah, you do miss her for that. But just, but also like that energy is straight on the pitch and in the training park as well. And that drives other people around you. So wherever she is going, um, they're going to be very lucky to to have her. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think we'll be too far off um, <laughs> with with our, with our, with our guesses. But um, yeah, there you are. No, really good to see you. And um, yeah, great. Great to, to see Munster lift the trophy to, to rest that off uh, off Leinster. Huge congratulations to to the people of Limerick uh, and Cork. Many, many congratulations. Some other results at the weekend then, Berth, um, from the Premier 15s. Um, the results as we go through them. Um would be DMP struggled again, didn't they? Um, and Saracen 75 5 again, only 21 named in a match day squad of 23. <sighs> they need help, Berth. Um, it, it simple as that. But if you're an organizing body and you start giving one team or one club help, everybody else is going to turn around and go, Well, hang on, da da da. Um, but it's it's <clears throat> yeah, it's not Luffman's fault, is it? It's not the players' fault. Yeah, you know, they're an incredibly tight group. I was down at Gloucester last weekend. Yeah, you know, they are a really, really tight group, and they've got a huge amount of pride in what they do. Um, but just not level. And yeah, you know, they are now chasing their tails. I know we only just started season two of three of them being up in the in the Premiership, but they are they're chasing their tails now, aren't they? Yeah, and sadly, you know, it's a, a similar fate to last season as well. And and I, I hear you saying, you know, if, if you start helping one, then others going to ask. But what other teams can't field a full team at the moment? You know, that that certainly it would ring alarm bells just from a player welfare point of view. You know, players potentially having to stay on when they need to come off and all those kind of things. So... Yeah, something needs to to be looked at there. Oh look, I think yeah, my personal opinion is is you know go get the England coaches to to go and do a couple of sessions up there. Get you know get Amy Turner to go up and do a couple of sessions up there. What what can the organising body do, do to to organise? I just just think yeah, that that would be the the moaners, the 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 two old grouchos in the um, in the Royal Box, the Muppet Show, wouldn't it? Um, whatever their names were, um, would be complaining. Oh, you're helping them. You should be helping us. But yeah, you know, it's um, it, it's a bit of a shame. Anyway, they went down um, seventy-five five. Gloucester Harby, Bristol. What a humdinger that was! Oh, wasn't it just? And you tipped Bristol. Yeah, I did. Um, Why? I thought just how they kind of well how they started. Um, their campaign last week I thought you saw lots of areas in, of improvement and I just felt they kind of have a bit more experience to edge them over um, so they were kind of my basis of the reasons and I was kind of watching the game with one eye whilst our game was on at the same time we were at six ways um, so more just seeing the result as opposed to the full game but what what a comeback you know, I've been in those games where half time it seems like you're down and out. And funny enough, it's been against Bristol as well. Um, and yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, just kind of that mental resilience to stay in the fight and not give up and and to to finish at the death. I mean, absolute heartbreak for Gloucester Heartbreak. I mean, they played re out of their skins, took their opportunities, and it's just. Yeah, it, I think it just adds to the flavour, doesn't it? It's a close fixture. It could have gone either way near the end. Um, but I think that's where that kind of young Gloucester Hartby team and, and you know, Mo can't play for 80 minutes. The way she, her work rate around the park, you know, she's got to have a bit of rest. But when you take her off the pitch, that's a big chunk of leadership gone. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, that probably that inexperience just probably is what nudged them out at the end. 
and the new signings obviously beginning to you know help the cause um you know we do go on tell me about um abby ward and and, and the influence and in an aura she has uh around a change room obviously a, a big loss for you guys but th- th- that effect seems to be taking hold down at bristol yeah she'll ooze lots of confidence in the players around her just from her own ability and her own knowledge and and that belief that she'll have to drive them on, but also like the likes of like a Hannah West who stood out for Wasps all of last season. You know, she's really stepped up and, and become a leader within that team within the first few weeks and leading from the front by her actions. Uh, you know, I don't know her as a player and what she's like vocally, but just the way that she plays and puts her body in front. And, and you know, they've got Sarah Byrne back, which is great, um, Amber Reed back. So they've, they've really bolstered back to kind of where they should have been last season really in these t- having fixtures which are tight yeah and Rana Marston go off the bench and, and doing doing her thing uh, so yes 24-17 Bristol good away victory for them your game against Worcester 66 points to 31 it was at six throws obviously to pick up the bonus point for scoring four tries or more something they probably wouldn't have done last season um, you've played in the last few seasons how impressed were you with them? Yeah, do you know what? I think the the biggest thing I felt was kind of their game management, playing in the right areas of the pitch and then using what's their strength. So obviously they scored three from driving malls and then into pick and goes, which is something, you know, they may have not been able to get themselves into those positions um, from that game management point of view. So I think, you know, the development of that understanding, you could see that throughout the um, squad. But you know, Joe Yap's got such a young and talented side that watching them play against Sale the week before, they're, they're just, they're desperate. They're desperate to do well. They're desperate to be on their feet and make an effect and, you know, do as much as they can. They, they, they don't sit back. And I think, you know, that kind of real rich history of what Worcester is all about is really coming into those young players. And yeah, like, could we Harlequins should have been a lot better in those areas, and you know we we don't like to leak those kind of tries or any points. And I think you know you've got to give credit where it's due, and and they played took their opportunities where they had them. Um, and yeah, you know I don't think we would have thought that would have been the result. It was, you know it was pretty tight for moments of that game, especially in the first sort of um, quarter and into the first thirty minutes. You know it was something like nineteen fourteen or nineteen twelve, and you know people wouldn't have thought that. So yeah, no, really pleased for Worcester. Um, obviously, really pleased that we finished the game out and kind of managed to play through the full eighty and finish the last twenty. Um, you know, we had some great substitutions come on and make a big impact as well. It's good to have Lucy Packer back. Um, and yeah, I think that's probably the next level. Um, hearing Joe Yap in interviews post game around how they can hold in for the for the rest of the game it is kind of the next level that they need to get to. Yeah. So marks out of ten then for strict um, teacher on the side. What for Yappy? No, for you and your team. Oh, I think I think there was moments of like absolute pure skill and brilliance and some individual excellence, but I reckon we were probably around a sol a solid six. Uh, I think, yeah, and that might be be a bit generous. And I, and I think you know the players held their hands up at half time. We we weren't defending particularly well, and we were allowing them to come at us. We weren't kind of executing the things that we want playing plan to do. Um, and then come second half, we really stepped up and, and took that. So. But, you know, we know the potential that we have and we know the best that we can play and we know that that was nowhere near a 10. So, you know, that's an exciting thing that you can still put 66 points on a side and know you've got plenty more growth um, and plenty more to, to be better at. I was going to say, um, you're not going to give up the crown lightly if you're giving a 6 out of 10 for scoring 66 points on the road. Um, <laughs> beware the rest of the league. Um, Exeter. I know the, uh, they would have been frustrated at um, last week, um, going down narrowly, uh, 38-21, wasn't it, to, to Bristol. But um, a whopping 54-0 against, say, Katie Daly-McLean, MBE, uh, and her <laughs> shark side. 
Yeah, I think it was a really like much improved. I don't think you saw the best of Exeter when they played against Bristol. There was lots of errors that you don't normally see from them. And I think, you know, that's going to be an interesting return fixture for sure. But I, I, I genuinely think that they've got such a great amount of talent, English, um, USA, Canada, whoever they are, they bring such talent to that team that they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. This, in, I, I, you know, I think they're going to be a strong contender for that top four. Um, they've got world class facilities and coaches involved. You know, you're always hearing like drip thread the the amount that they have matched up with the men's program and the cost of knowledge and sharing and resource. You know, they're only going to get better. Um, and you know, I haven't spoken to Susie, but I reckon, you know, if I asked her what she thought of the performance last week, sorry, the week before round one, she would have said, well, that was nowhere near what we know we could, we're capable of. So again, another side that has pushed on this week and, and improved. Yeah. And she said a solid six for 54 now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but it's an interesting point because I, I totally agree with you. Uh, it's funny, isn't it? The, the teams that are... <clears throat> more fully immersed um, as one club. And it's not to say you do things the same way. In fact, you know, um, actually do things differently. Don't have to do everything that uh, the men's side do. But those those clubs that are sort of fully immersed are the ones near the top end of the table. Just brings me to our, to, to the last result. Was 29-0 over Loughborough Lightning. I'm not sure they've been nailed for, I, I think, uh, John Maxwell, didn't it? On his, yeah. On... Um, it's starting from 2018, I think it was, but because they've been perennially third, fourth. Does one player have that effect on her team and squad that we're now thinking, gee, stuff we're lightning are going to do well to, to reach the players because Emily Scarrett is not going to be around for probably the entire season. Oh yeah. I think she, she does have that amount of influence and um, the amount of work that she can do for her team positionally with the kick that she has and just just having her around gives you the confidence in your own team knowing that she's playing makes you think well we will be good because we've got Skaz we've got the world's best player um but you know it's not just Skaz it's Helen Arona obviously Rona Lloyd's also moved on now and um, they were missing a couple the, some of the Scottish so there's a lot of influence that are missing from that side at the moment uh, and I think I think Sarah Hunter played out of her skin and was just trying to be everywhere and tackle everything and do everything. But everybody needs to play like that. And, you know, that's such a young back line and really ambitious. And, you know, I'm excited to see those players develop because they are good talent. But you need you need a bit more kind of experience, a little bit more knowledge. And, and that's what Skaz brought for that side. It gave them that kind of calmness and relax. And, and I think... Yeah, she will be sorely, sorely missed um, from the whole side. Yeah, indeed. So, uh, good. Yeah, this is uh, Sarah Hunter. I mean, uh, played um, played exceptionally, exceptionally well. So this weekend, then, birth round three of the uh, Premier Fifteens. Your predictions, please. Bristol Bears against Sharks. Bears v Sharks. Bears are going to win that one quite comfortably as well, no, I think. But who would actually win between a bear and a shark? Well, it depends where the fight is. If it's on land or if it's in water. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, because I watched a documentary the other day, Blackfish. It's absolutely outstanding. It's about orcas and sea world. I, I, my, so, my favourite animal in the world it's, uh, an orca and it's a brilliant documentary watch it <laughs> uh, Gloucester Harbury um, Sail Oof. at Sail mm. oh. Sharks v Harbury's I think it will be tight but I th I think Gloucester are going to I think Gloucester are going to do it Ooh. They're missing Jody, aren't they? Sale will be missing Jody, yeah. which is important. Um, and and Lauren Delaney, so and and Leah Lyon. So yeah, I think Gloucester are going pretty fully loaded. So yeah, that's how you're getting out of it with your old mate Katie. 
good. <laughs> Harlequins Exeter. Uh, yeah, really. Both solid excited. sixes. Both solid sixes. Yeah, weekend. yeah. It's going to be a real tough challenge, I think, for both teams. Um, you know, we're we're at home, so that's our advantage that we have. So we've got to try and capitalise on that because they're really tough to play away. Um, but yeah, really excited for the fixture. Um, but I'm, of course, I'm going to back the champions. I'm going to back Harlequins. Um, they will definitely step up a level from last week and see what happens. Yeah, nice, nice saying that word, isn't it? What's against um, Warriors? Insects versus Warriors. <laughs> um, I think this is going to be an interesting matchup. Um, I think Wasp looked really strong last week um, against Loughborough. Um, and I think they'll, they'll push on from that form as well. Um, I think they're in a really good place at the moment. But but Worcester are there and thereabouts. So I, I'm intrigued at that one. But I do think w Wasps will, will sting. <laughs> uh, Saracens, Loughborough Lightning. Definitely, I think it's going to be Saracens. I think... If we were talking about last season, I mean, the last game of their semi-final against Loughborough, Loughborough almost beat them. Um, I'd love to see that kind of contest again, but I just, I think Loughborough at the moment they're in a they're in a bit of a struggle, and they probably need to get through this week, have that week off, uh, regroup, and then and then move forward. But yeah, I think Saracens are, are going to be too dominant for them. Good. So you have gone Bristol Bears, got to Harbury Harlequin. Saracens. Nothing out of the ordinary there at all. And of course... Any that you would disagree with? Nah, you have to wait to see for Friday or Saturday only for my predictions. Um, <laughs> no, Bear Shark, I agree with you. I think Bristol... Sail close to Hartbury. I, don't, I, think, I think they'll be annoyed. I think they'll be annoyed. Yeah. For those who don't know, Katie, 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 yeah. <laughs> exactly my point. Uh, uh, was I yeah, I think we'll, we'll beat Worcester, although I think it'll be uh, tight. You think the yeah, Saracens, yeah, uh, no, I think, yeah, you'll you'll come, you'll the champs will just come through extra. I'm still hating my bets. I want to see the team selections for sale against Gloucester Hartbury before I predict that one. Well, thank you very much. Um, of course, the French League gets underway at. Le weekend. We. Oui. Uh, yes, the. <laughs> it's improved. I mean, uh. Literally spent all summer down the door door, and you just brushing up on my French vocab. Um, Elite one in France gets underway at the weekend, as we say. Uh, first round of fixtures looks like this: Tilly Mazin against Bagnac, Toulouse against Stade Rene, Montpellier take on Bayonnais. Bibogny host ASM Rogan out the champions, the Harlequins of French rugby, and Stade Francais against Grenoble, Lille against Lyon, Lens and Stade Bordelais, by my calculations and my poor French, have bye weekends. Hoping that's the case and my French <laughs> is okay. We'll bring you all those results, of course, next week. And yeah, that's something I'd like to do uh, in this series, just to get a bit more. French reaction. Yeah. Um, to be reluctant to come on. God knows why when we talk about documentaries about killer whales. Anyway, um, <laughs> New Zealand domestic rugby will return, except uh, Auckland, after the nationwide COVID lockdown from the 17th of September. Um, NZR will release a revised draw of the Far Out Palmer Cup. Staying in New Zealand, they announced their squad, did they not, for the, 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 the tour up here to double test against France and the Red Roses. Any standout for you in that squad? Well, I think you can't look past the, the Sevens players that are coming back across again. Um, interesting where Kelly Brazier has been named as, outside back. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm interested to see where she's going to slot in. Um, but yeah, I mean... You want to see the likes of Stacey Flula, who's who's a favourite of our pod, um, and you know Portia Moodman and Kelly Brazier, those three back in a fifteen shirt. I think you know players 
that they're going to come up against, want to play against them. They're excited to play against those types of players. So, yeah, really excited to see those guys back in. And Carla Hepper as well, seeing her in the squad, you know, in and out, having children, coming back, reaching top form again. Um, you know, played against her at the Stoop in 2010 World Cup. A phenomenal player, so yeah, it's good to see her back in the, in the in the team. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, she does think there's still scorch marks at Surrey Sports Park from where she scored so many yeah. tries in the group stages. Uh, I said group stages, I didn't bring up the final. She literally uh, went through me and Spence in the final. Again, I've let it go, I've let it go, kind of clearly. 11 years on, uh, she's now 36. Is years that old, oh my god, it is. Yep. Capable wow. to the same seat, clearly. Uh, there's no room for Hazel to uh, the Blue 10 uh, and 12 new caps. And if you if you do get a chance, uh, it just shows what it means to, to these players. Watch Patricia Mayapo and Crystal Muzza Murray, their reactions to, to getting their first ever call-ups on social media. Just scroll through the, the Blackburn's uh, handle and, and pick those up because they are... I mean, just magic. Absolutely magic. Um, over the other side of the Southern Hemisphere, Argentina announced a 20-player squad, plus an appointment of Gisela Acuna. I think so. <laughs> Pioneer of women's rugby in their country uh, to their coaching team and the targets for the Valentin Martinez tournament in November and continued progress towards the World Series. So, things it just feels like the plates are beginning to move a bit, doesn't it, uh, Berth? And the GB squad, after their success of Mission Possible, back on the road. Just announced today. What do you reckon oh, about that squad? You must be very happy about one particular player. Yes, I am. Yeah, no, obviously they've named a few new faces and new names. And, and yeah, really proud of Heather Cow from Harlequins, who's getting a shot. I mean, she's been lighting up the Prem 15s for the last few seasons now. And she's waited patiently. There's a lot of great wingers in England. Um, and she's been waiting for her opportunity. So I really can't wait to see how she goes out there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, some uh, debutant appointments for, for many of the uh, Premiership players. Grace Compton, as you say, Heather Cow, Alicia Mort, looking forward to seeing her. She, rapid uh, Gloucester Hartbury scrum off. Jodie Onsley as well. Great to hear in the sevens fold. And Shona Campbell as well. Congratulations all and all the best over in Canada. That wraps up another week for us um, but rather amiss I mean, she's, she's new to it that's all we can say she's new new to this game uh, Berth is Sarah Hunter MBE um, so we did mention the uh, the W Rugby competition which we ran yeah was uh, went fairly large um, and why wouldn't it when uh, the competition was to win a season's worth of balls so a huge big up Two. Drum roll. God, they much prefer you to say it than me. Ashley Manson of Shotton Steel Ladies in North Wales. I think I've said that right. Shotton. Yeah, tidy that. Shotton Steels. Yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah, I, th <laughs> I think you're Shotton Steels. I'm not even going to uh, attempt a Welsh accent. And Ashley, plays, she plays a bit of gridiron as well, I believe, a bit of American football. Um, so anyway, look, W Rugby, fabulous. Do, do check them out. Um, for every ball that you buy, they donate one back into grassroots rugby. It, well, there's nothing not to like, simple as that. So, um, and you look, we're not sponsored <laughs> by them or, or, or anything. They're just, yeah, they're, they're, they're good guys. The balls are exceptional. Um and uh, yeah, they're, they're yeah, doing some good things. Um, oh, anyway, the final shout out has to be to Russia. Has your Russian accent? No, um, who've won both legs of the hey, my Russian accent would be all right. Yeah, of half course. Polish, remember? Polish, on, but go for it, Johnny. No, <laughs> best Polish accent. Russian no, accent. no, I'm good. Three, two, one. Well done to Russia. 
<laughs> I was trying to be the most cockney instead. <laughs> no, but on all serious note, well done to Russia who won both legs of the Rugby Europe Beach Tour. Yeah, in Australia. Indeed, so bless you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, next week i rugby just keeps coming thick and fast i, I know we're in the process of trying to have a little chat with Bryony clear I'll see how she's enjoying changing the uh, the red and black to uh black and gold black and amber black and yellow i, I don't know which what black and gold referring. i think they say black and gold so well i've covered all bases off so i can't offend anyone <laughs> uh you'd be surprised um and um, we want to hear about some rugby down in South Africa. So we're lining up Lynn Cantwell. We were, we're going to go over to Uganda as well, get some some load down from, from over there. But um, yeah, we've got some exciting guests coming up um, as we move into the autumn series. But as ever, people who haven't done already need to check out the fact that we've got Stash. Hallbro.com forward slash WRP. They can follow us everywhere, Birth, can they not? Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, just at Pod Women's Rugby. You know, give us a follow, give us a share, and, you know, get in touch. If there's something on the pod that you're not hearing or there's a discussion you want us to talk about, then then reach out. Absolutely. And I invite anyone who has reached out and asked us to, who's DM'd us with a message and not had it written out on the pod, always do it. Uh, so yes. huge, huge thank you to you Earth. good to see you after the summer break looking well and I'm glad the knee's going well thank uh, you god speed that return a <laughs> uh, huge thank you as ever to to Harry to Sean to Tom Rugby Nut and to Bluebell and remember add more substance to your life less spectacle until next time.